Hello everyone, welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finance 1. This is section 2.5 on Markov processes. So, first we will talk about the definition of a Markov process. So consider the binomial asset pricing model where this sequence, right, x0, x1, up to xn is an adaptive stochastic process. And we talked about what an adaptive stochastic process means, right? So consider uh, this one, this uh, x0, which is the random variable. Well, but since we're like a time zero, it's not random, so it's actually no. And then if you flip a coin and we get a head, we move to x1. If you get a tail, we move to x1 of t, t, right? And we can keep doing this as we can go on. And we can imagine, for example, that this is the timeline, right? So we said this is an adaptive stochastic process if at every time, for example, at time one, the random variable depends only on the first coin toss, right? And we can see that here. So x1 depends only on the first coin toss. x2 depends only on the first two coin tosses. And xn will depend on the first n coin tosses. And this is just what an adaptive stochastic process is, right? Now we said that this adaptive stochastic process is a Markov process. If at any at any time step n, right? So at any time step n, for every function that I can think of f, there is another function g such that this relationship holds. And to understand this, we can think about it this way. So if I stand at time one, right? So for example, I stand here on this node. What I'm interested in studying is a function of the random variable next time, right? And I want to have my best guess of this. So maybe like if you can think of it, maybe xn1 is a stock price, right? And this function is maybe uh, max of the stock price at time n plus 1 minus k and 0, right? So for example, this is the case of a call option. So what I'm standing at here at time n, what I'm interested in studying is basically a function of this random, of this stochastic process at uh, over the next time period. If I can say like, okay, the expected value of this function on next time period, right, of the random variable is simply like some type of function of like the value of like the, the stochastic process as I know it today, then we call it, it's a Markov process, right? So basically my best guess of the future, or the future depends only of a function of something that I know today. And I will explain this more as we move forward and a few more concrete examples. So for example, let's look at the st stock price process and we can show that this is Markov. So in the binomial asset pricing model again, so we have this, so at time n, we just flip the coin up, we move to USN, which is just SN plus one H and tail, we move to this, to this value. Then what I'm interested in knowing is like, as I stand at time n, what is my best guess of, of a function of the stock price tomorrow, right? And this is very simple, again. Uh, so if you move up, we have a probability P of moving up, a probability Q of moving down, and the number I'm interested in is actually the function of these guys, right? Then this value is just uh, represented here. I guess P times the value if I move up, Q time the value if I move down, right? And then we can replace SN plus one by the value U, SN, right? Then this is nothing but some type of function of, S of SN, right? So we know everything that we need to know here, right? We know P, we know this function, we know U, we know the stock price today. So basically my best guess of the future is based on just on the function of the stock price as I see it today. And this shows that the stock price is Markov. Okay, so now let's show a link between Markov and derivative pricing. So consider a derivative, right, whose payoff at term n is given by uh, this function. And here actually mean capital N. is given by this function, right? And we can imagine, for example, if this is the call option, then Vn like this Vn of S of N will just be basically max 
of the stock price at time n minus k uh, n0 right if it was a call option so this is just like a simple example so that's all we're saying here all right so using the risk trap uh, pricing formula we have shown that we can rewrite it this way as well right the value of the option today or the derivative today is nothing but the discounted value of the value of the option one period from now as we're seeing it today right and that also makes sense so hence we have basically but we can just replace this this n here by s n minus one and we can have this relation here right and then this vn then can be replaced by the the function all right the payoff and we can do that here and then we notice that actually the stock price is markov right and by markov what that means then that means all this thing here we can write it as some function g of the stock price at time n minus one so we can go ahead and do that right and we you can just call it like a, fun a function v n minus one right and that's then this means that in general like if we want to whenever we want to find the value of the option at a time period n we can just find a function right of it's just like a function of the stock price at time n and this is very interesting right because now that means like unlike the risk neutral pricing formula here we don't really need to keep track of all these v's all we need to keep track of is the stock price today and some function vn and then when we do that we just uh, feed the function the stock price today and then it will spit out the value of the option today and this is very good and this is why people like markov processes a lot as well because it's it's, it's way more uh, efficient co from the computer point of view to just store like a function instead of storing like all these huge variables right here all these vn's and so finding the option and uh, the, the the function VNs can are very simple. They can basically just be found using this recursive formula, right? Okay, so now let's look at the max date process. We have been so far giving example of a few Markov processes, but now we can show a process that is not Markov. So what is this max date process? So we can imagine we're all still working in a binomial model uh, world, right? And let's say these are the parameters P going probability of going up, probability of going down, a factor, U factor, and a stock price today. So, what the max of that process does is uh, it keeps track of the highest value of the stock price we have seen up to time T that we're standing at. Uh, so, for example, let me bring the pen here. So, we're starting like uh, the stock price start at S, S0 equal to 4, right? So the highest value of the stock price we have seen today is 4. So the beginning value of M0 will be 4. And then if we go up, the stock price will go to 8. If we get tail, the stock price will go to 2, right? So then we just pick the maximum value between 4, the stock price previous period, and the stock price this period is 8. So the value of M1H will be 8. And for the, for the, for the down case tail, the stock price previous period was 4 now is 2 so the maximum is 4 so we'll put 4 in here and that's what we keep doing at every time period here right we always pick, put inside these boxes uh, the highest value of the stock price as we have seen it so far and that's like the max to date process of the stock uh, and that's the process we're studying here and trying to understand if it's Markov well not that um, so if you want the expected value of the variable at time three, then at, at, and let's assume like given that well, the first quantos was a tail and the second one was a head, head right? So that means like tail and then head. We are at this node, and you want to find the expected value uh, of this random variable at time three. So that's pretty easy. We just need to multiply this by the value of probability of going on this node, probability of going on this node, and then we add them up. And we have the expected value right and that's all we did here so p tilde probability of going up time the value right which is eight here plus uh probability of going down time the value so so if we stand at this node then the expected value of m3 
as we're seeing it here is basically 23rd right and we can do the same thing for this node also for example right the expected value of this this of m3 then will just be basically this time p time q sum them up and that's it but not that we cannot find a function g such that g like if i take g of this of this guy will be equal to the expected value and g of this guy will be equal to the expected value as well right and that's what we're saying here so g of m2 given th is the same thing as g of 4 right because at this node m2 th is nothing but 4 if we plug in this in this function then we need we want like the function to be equal to 20 20 over 3 right which is just coming from the expectation here right but then if it's mark for it to be markov we need also like basically g of m2 t to be equal which is also g of 4 to be now equal to instead uh, 2 third over 4 right and of course we cannot find like one function where it gets fitted like 4 and it's going to give us two different numbers that will not be a function anymore right so that's why we say that like, the process is not markov however we can show you later on a trick where like we can recover recover the markov property by using something called state variables um, before that we must we need some more complicated and advanced uh definitions and we'll go to them now so let's define now a k-dimensional markov process so consider the binomial asset pricing model and here now we have k adapted stochastic processes the first adapted stochastic process is called x1 is notated x1i the second one x2i where i can go from 1 to n so if i were going to visualize it so maybe we'll look something like this uh, so i have my timeline here and this is n capital n the end of the time period so maybe we'll have the first stochastic process x1 uh, that will look something like this right and maybe the second one will look something like this and the third one blah 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 and we'll get basically k of this right so then we call like this uh all these guys k-dimensional stochastic uh, adapted stochastic process right and now this k-dimensional uh, adaptive stochastic process is called like a k markov process if at any time step n for every function f that takes basically k uh, variables there is another function g that takes k variables such that uh, this thing holds right so our best guess of the function of our uh, stochastic process as we're seeing it at time n is just basically a function of the stochastic processes that the value of these processes as we see them today right so basically my best guess of the future is nothing but a function of the stuff that i know today and that's what the k mark of dimensional process is very simple So now let's let's look let's revisit this idea of max to date process, right? And now we consider the two-dimensional uh, stochastic adaptive stochastic process SNM, where SN is just the process of the stock price, and MN is just basically the max to date process, right? The maximum value of the stock uh, that we have encountered up to time n. So now we can define this variable here, which is just going to be Sn plus 1 divided by Sn. So of course, this guy would depend only on the n plus 1's coin toss, right? And so we have this will have to hold, right? Because if you take just y multiplied by Sn, then we just get back the Sn plus 1. And, and a definition of mn plus 1 is just def nothing but the maximum of like mn the maximum value of the stock as we see it today uh, at time n plus basically uh, n the value of the stock next period and then we can just replace these functions here right? like sn plus 1 is nothing but sn what time this y that we define so now if we take the expected value our best guess of the future of this function of the, which is a, a function of the stock price tomorrow and this mn tomorrow that is the same thing as so sn plus 1 we can replace by sn time y right as we shown here 
and mn plus one we can replace with like this function as we shown here right so note that now already at this point we're not seeing anywhere here n plus one right which is a good sign so we can also then this expectation is nothing but if you if the probability of going up crossing the tossing the coin and getting ahead time sn time u right and this u is coming from this y here because uh, i can bring the pen and show this one very quickly so if you get a head, so that means like y is just sn plus 1 head divided by sn, right? And sn plus 1 head is, we know what that is. That is just u, sn, divided by sn. So that is u, right? So that's why exactly this u is coming from. And in the case of if it was like a tail, for example, then this would be d, and we'll get a d. And that's what basically this d here is coming from, just in case you're wondering, right? And mn times snu and same thing so it's just this is very straightforward so then notice that everything that's here is not is nothing but a function of sn and a function of mn so basically what we're saying here is uh the expected the expectation of this of this function which depend of two var variables that are in the future is nothing but just a function of those things that we know today aka is markov so the process that we've shown here, uh, Sn plus Mn uh, and Mn together is, is Markov.